Hello and welcome to this quick tip from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today I'm going to show you the cast modifier. Uh, this is one of the many modifiers that's in Blender. We've been working to show you a lot of them such as the array, the bevel, and things like that. And today we're going to talk about the cast modifier. This is one that's actually not used a whole lot. Uh, I think a lot of people have trouble finding a good use for it. But it can be really cool in the right situation. So what I'm going to do is first off just show you the basic example. So if we go ahead and just add a cast modifier to our default cube, and let's just say we've got these options here, we can choose the cast type to be either a sphere, a cylinder, or a cuboid. And if we then increase the factor, you'll notice that nothing happens. Well, that's because with the cube, a cube is a very poor example for this just because by default, you know, it only has the the eight vertices on it. So if we just go and hit tab to go into edit mode, then we can hit W and subdivide and then we'll just increase the number of cuts to say six so that we have a decently high res mesh. Now we can go and hit tab to leave edit mode and now you'll notice our cube has immediately changed shape as soon as we left edit mode and if we adjust the factor here you can see that we can create it, I mean move all the way to a perfect sphere and on past to a cuboid shape. So this is kinda cool but you know it doesn't really allow you to do a whole lot other than maybe some kind of fun sort of procedural animations but another thing that we can do with this that actually works really well is to use a control object. So currently, you know, you could go ahead and animate this using the factor value, uh, adjusting the radius if needed, which by default um, is set to zero, but then you can increase it. And you'll notice that, you know, then you can kind of scale it up or down, which if it's less than the entire size of the cube, we get some of the edges of the cube still left intact. Then we've also got the size option, which by default is chose to project from the radius, so if you disable that, then you can adjust the size at will. For the most part, you know, you're going to just tweak these as needed, but the thing that I really want to show you is the control object, and this allows us to choose the center of the, the cast from another object. So, for example, if we go ahead and add in, say, an empty, and we'll just go ahead and leave it right where it's at for now, choose our object, and set the control object to be empty, by default, you'll notice that nothing happens, but if we now grab our empty and move it around, you'll notice that it's basically defining the center of our cast, which in some places, you know, if we go too far away, then it becomes a little distorted because, because of the radius here. So if we, say, go all the way out here and then grab this and adjust or increase the radius, then you can see, you know, basically it's creating a sphere through here. And, you know, this may not seem like a whole lot, but you can actually do a kind of cool little animation with it. Let's say you've got a sphere that then goes through a gelatin cube or something, and assuming the gelatin cube remains completely intact, you know, you would want that cube to then wrap around the sphere. Well, you could do this with soft bodies or something, or you could go ahead and do it with the cast modifier. So with this, let's just say we've got our cast here, and you know, we could choose sphere, cylinder, or cuboid. In this case, we're going to choose a sphere, and I'm going to go ahead and then just add in a, uh, we'll add in another sphere, actually. So I'm going to go hit Shift A, add in a mesh, and UV sphere. So this is actually a, a real sphere. We'll take our radius back down to 1, and then let's go ahead and, let's see, our size, something is missing here, from radius... Oh, well, you know, I'm just going to go back to the default settings, so I'll re-add this. There we go. Factor of, say, 1. And then what I can do is I'll grab the sphere, and I'm just going to do a very basic little animation. So I'll just move this over along the x-axis to maybe right about there. Right on frame 1 down here, I'll go ahead and hit I to insert a location keyframe. And then maybe I'll just move up, say, uh, three, three sets of frames. So hitting the up arrow three times, go to frame 31, and I'll move it move the cube right over here. So just on the exact opposite side, I'll hit I, insert a location keyframe, and then I'll move back 10 frames, or, oops, actually, on this one, I'll hit Alt-I, remove that, and I want to go up 10 more. So there we go, so now it's right there. Insert that, go back to frame 20, and you'll notice it's right there, so now it's just moving straight through like that. Now what I can do is go ahead and grab my cast object here, and on uh, frame 
20, I want to go ahead and set the factor to be 1. So I'll just go ahead and hit I, such that it's right there. And then when the cube is just touching the outside edge, I want to go ahead and set the factor to be 0. So maybe when it's right here at frame 14, I'll go ahead and set the factor down to 0, hit I to insert that keyframe, and then move through it. And then when it's just on the other side, right about there, I'll go ahead and set this to 0 again, hit I, and now if I go back to the beginning by hitting shift left arrow, play back my animation, you can kind of see what happens. So, you know, it's nothing crazy cool, but we can actually do a little bit more with this because, you know, right now this should actually be um, deforming just this side and this side shouldn't be bulging out. So if we set our control object here to be the sphere, all of a sudden it works based on the location of the sphere, kind of wraps around it and then let's go. So, you know, a very simple animation, but definitely something that you could do a lot with, you know, whether that is a uh, bullet shooting through gelatin or, you know, any kind of thing, something like that where you've got sort of a wave effect going on. This kind of thing can work pretty well for basic animation. So that's the basic cast modifier. You know, it maybe doesn't have a lot of uses, but when you do need something like this, you know, it's pretty hard to, to beat it. You can do similar things like this with the soft body modifier or with the soft body physics simulation over here, but you're going to be obviously running into a lot more issues to work through just by, based on the nature of physics simulations. You know, obviously there's a lot more settings, there's a lot more things that can go wrong, and you know, it may just not be what you want. You may want something very nice and simple, which is where this comes in.